Welcome to 15751. Uh, I slightly prefer this title, TCS Toolkit. Uh, my name is Ryan O'Donnell. You can call me Ryan. And uh, this is lecture one. This is the only lecture which has slides, which is nice because you can see we could not control the lights correctly and it's very bright on the screen. But uh, that'll be good when we're using the blackboard, which we'll be doing in all subsequent lectures. We'll be, you know, proving Sterling's formula and stuff on the blackboard. But today in this lecture, uh, it's an introductory le lecture, so I'm just going like, to tell you some stuff about the course. Hopefully you can read the screen. Okay, so uh, today's lecture will be divided into three parts. Um, part one, I'll tell you just some stuff about the course. And then, oops, part two, I'll tell you how to TCS. Uh, and in part three, we'll talk about um, street fighting mathematics. So there'll be a little bit of math at the end of this lecture. Okay, so let's dive right in. I'll start by telling you about uh, the course and you know what we're going to do in the, the next uh, 15 weeks. <clears throat> so the title of the course is TCS Toolkit, so we can just figure out what it's about by going through the two words in the title. Uh, the first one is TCS. That stands for Theoretical Computer Science. Now, actually, there's lots of topics that are at the intersection of computer science and theory uh, that we will not be talking about in this course. So for the purpose of this course, uh, CCS means algorithms and computational complexity. So as I said, there's lots of other things uh, that's theoretical and mathy in computer science like uh, logic and PL and verification and uh, so forth. Uh, but we won't be talking about those things. Um, there's actually a, a, a nomenclature division between theory A and theory B. Uh, so algorithms and com computational complexity is theory A and uh, the other stuff is theory B. And uh, there's no like ranking or anything. It just came from the fact that these two really thick books called Handbook of Theoretical Computer Science, Volume A, which is about this stuff, and Handbook of Theoretical Computer Science, Volume B, which is about uh, the other stuff. And we'll be doing the A stuff. Another way to put it, if you're kind of in the know, if you're already a little bit sophisticated, is this is the Stock Fox topic. So if you're not in the know, uh, the two main conferences in which all sort of the top research in this field gets published are called Stock uh, Symposium on Theory of Computation and Fox Foundations of Computer Science. And so uh, somehow these two conferences that happen once a year are used as a shorthand for the set of topics that we'll be talking about. Great, so that's TCS uh, and Toolkit. Well, that's a little bit self-explanatory. So uh, the Toolkit refers to the fact that I want to give you an intro to some of the tools and topics, especially mathematical tools and topics that arise in TCS research. So in fact, this course is going to be um, maybe like 50% math topics and 50% like computer science topics. And you know, if you had 28 additional lectures, as I do, uh, to talk about math and computer science topics relevant for TCS research, then uh, you know you could choose some subset of you know 100 possible topics to talk about. And so the ones that I'm choosing are inevitably biased by my own interests. So we're probably going to get you know more I don't know probability and complexity theory than you would get from some other lecturer. But um, that's how it's going to be. And another thing I want to emphasize about this course is this is a bit of a warning. It's more breadth than depth. And actually, um, not all students are you know, like this fact. Some people would prefer a course that um, you know, goes into more depth about fewer topics. And this course, to some extent, goes into less depth about more topics. That's the way I've designed it. And as I said, it's a bit of a warning. If that's not to your taste, well, um, be prepared for it. Uh, if you're actually a CMU undergrad, it's not completely dissimilar from like the course 251, but for graduate students, which is, I guess, a little nod to that in the, the number of the course 751. Uh, okay, so when I was preparing this course uh, a while back, you know, what I was really thinking about is the following. You know, if you're getting into research in TCS, or if you're reading a TCS paper, or if you're attending a TCS talk, there's some level of background knowledge that usually the speaker or writer sort of assumes the audience knows. You know, they kind of assume, you know, usually what is a turnoff bound or like what is a linear program. And, uh, you know, you may not necessarily know that. Uh, you might not necessarily have learned that as an undergraduate. And so I was trying to, you know, scoop up a bunch of such topics that are considered sort of background knowledge, all those sort of things that, mathematical things especially, that you may need to know to try to follow a TCS talk or read a TCS paper. And as for who this class is for, um, well, on one hand, it could be for anybody that's interested in doing TCS research. 
Um, again, when I was designing the course, like the you know, platonic ideal of like a student I had in mind was maybe like a first year graduate student that's either going to, intending to do TCS research or at least has an interest in TCS and TCS research. Um, so that's quite a, who initially the course was designed for. And I should finally add that it's a very mathy course, so the mathematical maturity is important. So, I mean, a lot of it's going to be on the board, you know, definition, theorem, proof, and you're going to be required to write, you know, um, proofs in your homework. Um, so that's a little bit of either a warning or an enticement, if like me, you really love math. Um, okay. So I wanted to flash up here a little bit of the syllabus. Roughly speaking, this is a bit tentative and uh, maybe not exactly precise, but roughly speaking, uh, the topics of the course kind of fit into like seven units, each of which will have between three and five lectures. So this is kind of the approximate syllabus for the remaining 28 lectures. Um, so we'll talk about asymptotics and probability, <clears throat> we'll talk about Fourier transforms in some applications, we'll talk about some elementary algebra in some applications, spectral graph theory, constraint satisfaction programs, and linear programming and SDP hierarchies, information and learning theory, and uh, some hardness, computational hardness. So these are the topics that you can look forward to. And as I said, there are as many other topics I could have chosen, but unfortunately we only have so many, so many weeks and so many lectures. This is what we'll hear about. And uh, the last thing I want to tell you a little bit about is, of course, the logistics for the course. I actually am not going to spend too much time talking about this um, out loud, because I'd rather spend the time talking about non-nuts uh, and bolts things. Um, the main thing I have to tell you is this website, which you must go to. So um, there's a website called Diderot that's developed by two professors here at CMU, and it's kind of going to be the combination of the web page for the course and the the piazza or the bulletin, uh, bulletin board for the course, canvas, whatever you want to call it, it was all rolled into uh, Ditero. So maybe you've used it before, maybe you haven't, but it's essential that all of you uh, go to it and find everything there. Uh, so feel free to do that on your phone or your computer while I'm rambling up here. Uh, this is where you'll find um, like all the announcements, like you know, there's a correction to the problem set or there's change to the due date, so you definitely want to watch out for that. Uh, this is where you can ask questions about the homework or about the lecture. It's where you can find the course policy in details, and where you can get the homework, and so forth. So uh, make sure you're enrolled in that. Um, speaking of which, as I said, uh, I will not you know, read the entire syllabus and course policy details here, but it's definitely obligatory that you do that yourself. I don't know, it'll take you 10 minutes, or 20 minutes, or seven minutes, or something. But please, definitely go online uh, to Ditero, find it, and read all of the details, so that you know everything there is to know about the course policy. Uh, and actually, as for homework, as a little bit of a warning, uh, we're going to have six homeworks. And the first one's going to be a little bit short. And just for your information, it'll be due in you know um, 10 days or something. It'll come out on Thursday. So that's just to get you ready for uh, action in this course. <coughs> um, Right, so as for grades, this is how it's going to break down. The main component of your grade is going to be from homework. There's going to be basically six homeworks, but the first one is a little bit short, so they're each worth 12%, and that adds up to 68%. Uh, there's also going to be a written project, which I'll tell you about uh, later in the course. Um, the due date for that is like April 3rd or something, and for the beginning of the course, just focus on doing the homeworks, and I'll tell you about how to start doing that project asynchronously later. <laughs> basically, the short story is that you'll be writing some eight-page document about like another topic, such as I might have lectured about, but didn't. Um, actually, after those are turned in, you'll also be uh, writing a short review of two of your classmates' projects. Um, <coughs> your project will not be graded by your class classmates, but uh, you know, we'll grade the reviews, and these will also be taken into account when we grade your projects. This is partly done to just have you, give you the right mindset about who your audience is. You're writing uh, this project for your classmates. And uh, another component of the class is Seminar attendance, you can find more details about that, again, in the course policies. But in short, um, you'll be required to go to three uh, theory talks from our regular weekly uh, seminar series, the ACL seminar, theory launch seminar, and theory seminar. Uh, so that counts for some of your grade. And class participation is the other 3%. Um, this is a 12-unit course, which means you're supposed to spend 12 hours a week on it. So this is, in my mind, how I thought 
to imagine, you would break it down. Your mileage may vary, <coughs> but you can see um, your main effort, I think, will be on doing the homework. There's a lot of long homework in this course, uh, so maybe a couple hours every other day. And uh, the other ones don't have like, uh, are not for the whole time, so maybe these are amortized. And of course, you'll be in lecture for three hours per week. I think this adds up to 12. Uh, so as I said, there are more details online, but any questions right now? Yeah? Do you require homeworks to be written up in um, LaTeX? Yes, all homeworks must be written up in LaTeX. I'll mention that more too. Uh, actually, for the first uh, uh, bunch of questions, I'll ask you your name. I may ask you your name even if I know your name, because I want to disguise the fact when I don't know your name, even though I should know your name. So uh, what's your name? Jennifer, right. I did know that. <laughs> Jennifer was in my class last semester. Uh, okay.